Hi, this is Yohan and welcome to a new video. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to upcycle a pair of unwanted jeans into a very cute crossbody bag. I don't do much of upcycling in my sewing adventure simply because I don't have that many materials at my disposal to do that kind of work. But this time I felt compelled to upcycle my husband's jeans that he accidentally ripped while moving furniture. I just couldn't resist it because it's a nice quality fabric and I like the color as well. So I took a pair of scissors, cut a few sections of the jeans and voila! The finished measurements of this bag are about 9.5 inch by 11 inch by 2.5 inch deep. There's a front zipper pocket, two slip pockets at the back, so I crop one of the pockets with magnetic snap closure, two internal slip pockets, and one zipper pocket as well. The best kind of jeans to use for this project is the real denim jeans that has no stretch. So feel the fabric if there is any stretch to it, or you can read the label. If it says 100% cotton, that's perfect. Now another thing that you need to consider as well is the size and the style of the jeans. Obviously the larger the size is, the more fabric you will get. So although I do show you the cutting process in this tutorial, which section I cut for which part, but that may vary with you. So I recommend that you first observe the garment, compare it to the measurements that the pattern called for, and see how you can cut the garment efficiently so you can make the most out of the fabric. If you don't have any jeans to be upcycled, but you like the design of this bag, feel free to just use regular fabric. You can use canvas, you can use cotton quilting, even vinyl. Just make sure to apply some sort of interfacing if you use lighter weight fabric such as cotton quilting fabric. All right guys, let's jump straight into the tutorial. So please enjoy and let's get started. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is to cut off this uh, back pocket section to make the slip pocket later. Cut a generous amount of fabric surrounding the pocket since we're gonna trim this off later and you will also need some amount of fabric for the seam allowances. All right, here is my initial cut. It's about roughly 10 inch by 10 inch. So we're gonna set this aside and then cut our front and back panels. Now I'm gonna use one of the leg of these jeans to extract the fabrics for the front and back exterior panels. So we're looking for 11 inches wide panels here, but I suggest you cut a slight wider. As you can see here, I cut 12 inches wide. This way there is enough room to wiggle and to straighten up the edges. Now you don't have to follow exactly the way I cut my fabric. It all depends on the size and the design of your jeans, so it may vary. But you get the idea, so cut the section a slight larger than the measurements that you need so that you have enough uh, room to play around with your fabric and the way you cut it. Now I'm gonna cut the seams of the crotch here so that my fabric will lay open. And there you go. So this panel here is enough for me to cut the upper and the lower front exterior panels. Now I'm gonna use my ruler and my rotary cutter to do the proper cutting according to the measurements. Now when you cut your fabric, try to follow the grain line. I know it's probably challenging right now that it is a garment, but a lot of denim fabric, you can actually see the weaving line. So try to just follow that and keep your cutting straight so that your fabric will not be unbiased and it becomes stretchy and a little challenging to work with. So yeah, just try to do your best to keep them straight. Here I've already cut panel 1 and panel 2. So for these panels, you want to try to get plain fabrics without any seams from the garment, especially around the area where we're going to install the zipper so that it will go smoothly. Next, I'm going to cut another section for the back exterior panel, pretty much the same method as previously. So let's go ahead and cut the back exterior panel or panel 4 according to what the measurements call for. So here is my back exterior panel. Another thing that I want to mention here, if you opt for the back slip pocket, avoid to have any garment seams or embellishments around the area where the pocket is going to be installed. Also the bottom area, since we're going to cut the little notches to create depth to the back. Next, we're going to work on the front zipper pocket. So prepare the zipper. I'm using a metal zipper here, 9 inch long, which refers to the length of the zipper teeth. Cut two pieces of little rectangles for the zipper tabs. I recommend to use lightweight fabric, such as the cotton quilting fabric, 
to minimize the bulk. I like to hand stitch the extension tape where the start of the zipper is so it will stay shut. Fold the zipper tabs in half, just like that. Position that on the zipper extension tape, secure with a clip and then stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edges. Repeat the same to the opposite end. Trim off the excess fabric so that the zipper tabs will be the same width as the zipper tape. Now you want to trim off the edges of the zipper tabs so that the zipper panel will measure 11 inches long. And when you do that, make sure it is centered. So I did mark the center point of my zipper here and then simply measure five and a half inch from the center and then trim off the excess fabric on both sides. And there you go. Now my zipper panel is 11 inches long and ready to be installed. Now lay panel to right side up and as usual, I want to use my basting tape to baste the zipper. So apply that on the top edges of the panel too. Take the zipper and lay that right side down with the start of the zipper at your left hand side. Press the edges with your finger so that the basting tape will be sticking onto the zipper. Now apply another layer of basting tape and then take panel 3 or the inner pocket panel and lay that right side down. Once you've done that, stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now let's turn this to the right side, finger press the seams and then top stitch. Since we're working with jeans fabric, of course we will need to use the jeans size needle. For the thread, I'm using a regular polyester thread. You can also use heavy duty thread if that's what you prefer. Now if you've never worked with jeans or thicker fabric before, I recommend to do a little bit of testing on a piece of scraps just to see which setting will work perfectly for you. Apply basting tape on the edges of the zipper tape and then take panel 1 and lay that right side down. Now let's flip this to the wrong side and then apply another basting tape along the edges. Bring the bottom edges of panel 3 towards the top. Make a fold there. And once everything is secured, stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, press the seams and top stitch. Trim off the bottom edges so that this panel will measure 12 and a half inches tall. And there you go, the front exterior panel is done. Next, we're going to work on the back slip pocket. So here is the pocket that I cut earlier from one of the back pocket of the jeans. So you want to trim the pocket so that it will measure 9 inch by 8 inch. And make sure that you have at least half an inch of extra fabric surrounding the pocket itself for the seam allowances. Take panel 6 or the pocket lining and lay that right side down. Pin this in place and then you want to stitch all around with about quarter of an inch seam allowance, leaving about 2 to 3 inches of opening on one of the side. Once you've done that, trim off all the corners and then turn the pocket inside out through the opening hole. Poke the corners, make them nice and flat. Fold the row edges of the opening hole towards the inside about quarter of an inch and then pin top stitch along the top edges. Once you've done that, position the pocket panel on the right side of the back exterior panel about two inches from the bottom. Center the position, of course. Pin this in place and then stitch the sides and the bottom to hold the pocket in place. And at the top side corners, you want to add angle stitching to reinforce the pocket. And then continue stitching with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're still using the same jean size needle and polyester thread. And I highly recommend to use walking foot to make it much easier to stitch evenly throughout the layers. And there you go guys, the back pocket is done. Now let's work on the interior of the back. So for the front and back interior panels, you want to cut two rectangles identical to the size of the exterior panels. Now let's work on the slip pockets. Fold the pocket panel in half with Ys, just like that. And then stitch the top edges with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And once you've done that, press the seams open, turn the pocket right side out, press it again and top stitch. Position the pocket panel on the right side of the front interior panel, about 3 inches from the top edges. Pin this in place, and then you want to stitch the sides and the bottom, and then divide the pocket into two by stitching right on the center of the pocket. Now if you wish to add a zipper pocket, this is the time to do it. Draw the zipper template on the wrong side of your pocket panel, 
about 2 inches from the top edges. So the template should measure 7 inch by 3 8 of an inch. And as usual, you want to draw the line on the center and the little corner triangles. Position the pocket panel on the back interior panel, right on the center about 1.5 inch down from the top edges. And then you want to stitch along the outer line and then proceed with the rest of the steps of installing the zipper. I'm pretty sure a lot of you already know how to install this kind of zipper, but if you need the tutorial on how to do that, I will refer you to a different video. So check that out somewhere in the video description. And I will also link that in the pattern. Next, we're going to install the magnetic snap closure. So you want to install the female magnetic snap at the back interior, the one that has zipper pocket, and the male magnetic snap should be installed on the front interior. So measure one and a quarter inch from the top edges, right on the center. And on the wrong side, apply a little bit of interfacing to stabilize it. And then install the magnetic snap closure according to the manufacturer's instructions. To box the corners of this bag, you want to cut one and a quarter inch square notches at the bottom side edges. And you want to do the same to the interior panels as well. Now let's assemble the back exterior panels. So lay them right sides together. And then sew the sides and the bottom with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to open the corner, match the bottom and the side seams, and then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And of course, you want to repeat the same to the opposite side. Now let's turn this right side out. It's looking great so far. Assemble the back interior the same way as the exterior, leaving about 4 to 5 inches of opening at the bottom to turn the back inside out later. Now we're going to work on the D-ring tabs. So prepare two D-rings with inner measurements of one inch. And then we're going to sew the tabs. So I'm using the cotton quilting fabric here instead of the jeans fabric because it's very thick. And it's going to be too much bulky since this will be sitting right on the side seams. So you want to cut two rectangles measuring four inch by three inch. And then you want to fold and press this in a fourth with Ys to make a one inch strip. Once you've done that, stitch along the side edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Attach the tab to the D-ring, just like that. Position that on the top side edges of the back exterior, right on the side seams there. Aligning the raw edges, and then clip, and then stitch to secure this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. For the strap, I'm going to use the fabric from the other leg of the jeans. So I'm just going to cut right from this section, and then extract four inch strip, um, a couple of those, and then join them together, so that I can get a 55 inch long strip, which is my ideal adjustable strap. Now if you don't have sufficient amount of jeans to make the strap or you doubt that your machine can handle the bulk, you may opt for a webbing strap or make the strap from the cotton quilting fabric. Whichever one works for you. So here I've already fold and press my strap. So I joined two strips on bias just like when making binding strips. And just like the usual, fold and press the strip in a fourth to make a one inch strap. And of course, you want to first fold the raw edges of the end of the strap towards the wrong side, about half an inch. And then stitch all around with an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. And there you go. Now you want to set this aside and we're going to assemble our back. Turn the back exterior panel wrong side out. And then you want to turn the back interior panel right side out. Insert the back interior into the back exterior. So the right sides should be touching each other at this point. And of course you want to be mindful with the side of the back. So make sure that the front side of the interior is touching the front side of the exterior. And the same goes with the back side. Now let's secure this in place with some clips starting from the side seams. And once you've done that, sew all around with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Turn the back right side out through the opening hole. Finger press to knitten up the top edges. And then top stitch all around with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done top stitching, we're going to take care of the opening holes. So pull the lining out and then fold the raw edges of the opening towards the wrong side, about three eighths of an inch, and then stitch to close the opening. Once you've done that, put the lining back inside. And all that is left to do now is to attach the strap. Again, this is something that I have done before and I have shown in a few different videos. So I'm just going to refer you to a different video where I show you how to install the adjustable strap and attach the strap to the back. Again, I will have the link somewhere in the description box down below. 
and you can also find it in the pattern. Heads up though, if your jeans fabric is on the heavier side, this might be very thick to be sewn. I have no problem with my sewing machine, so if you're not sure, I recommend to do a little bit of testing beforehand with some pieces of scraps. See how your sewing machine can handle it. Otherwise, you may opt for alternatives such as webbing strap instead. And there you go guys, our crossbody bag is done. That's about it for today guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye!